My name is Rob. I'm the Dungeon Tutor. And I'm here today to answer a question that you might have asked yourself if you were walking along a game store and you saw some of the role-playing game books and this one little line on some of the books might have caught your eye. You see, as far as I know, on the bottom of all of the Dungeons & Dragons books in the 5th edition, they have this little blurb here where they mention that they are the world's greatest role-playing game. Now, this can lead to hoots of derision from people who don't care for it, but do they have a claim of being the world's greatest role-playing game? Well, this is my response to that. Uh, the first thing is that nobody else could make a claim to be the world's greatest role-playing game. Every other game, no matter the pedigree, no matter the size of their audience, can hope to touch the amount of the player base and, quite honestly, a lot of the enthusiasm that people have for 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. I mean, the, the swell has been tremendous from those of us in the hobby who've been watching this whole thing develop and grow. From celebrity endorsements and play to just looking at sales and looking at online gaming, it's really the dominant force in the industry. Is it the greatest? That's a very subjective question. By a lot of metrics, by sales, it is. By media coverage, it is. It has certainly penetrated more than any other role-playing game ever. And it's not even close. Uh, it's been more popular than a lot of board games or other things within the industry, and it's undeniable that Dungeons & Dragons has had a big impact on many forms of media that we consume, from hit points in video games to casual references to gaming themes and movies and books and and things that don't necessarily involve role-playing games. So it is a, a very influential game, certainly. But is it the greatest? And as I said, this is going to be subjective, so I'm going to give you what I think is the most objective perspective I can. Greatness does not purely mean the bestseller. Because there's a lot of things that sell a lot that just may be not that good. And it certainly is not the most open game that anybody can come into and do exactly the thing they want. It's got a very, very uh, narrow focus that some people have worked hard to try to break open and expand to other genres and systems, but Dungeons & Dragons by itself is a fantasy role-playing game. It is class-driven, meaning that your characters, while you're playing it, have jobs, and those jobs steer their abilities and powers, giving them direction and purpose, often within the confines of the group as a whole. That's what's meant as a class-based system. It has prescribed jobs, and the jobs are the source of all of your powers and abilities. That's Dungeons & Dragons to a T. If you are a sword-swinging fighter, you have your role kind of laid out in front of you. It is to swing your sword at bad guys, generally keeping them away from your other members of your group. While there may be a diverse range of tasks within a particular class, generally there's going to be something they're going to specialize in and be better than most at, and in some cases, nearly essential at. Now, some people hate that aspect of it, that it is rigid and, and is defined by classes, but it's been a successful formula, and a lot of others have copied it. Again, look at video games and the like, and you'll see classes all over the place, jobs and then it's all been taken from, from Dungeons and & Dragons and similar games. Leveling is another Dungeons & Dragons staple. Your characters do adventure, risking themselves, trying to accomplish their goals, and after a point in time, they level up. They get stronger. They get more hit points that they can take more punishment in a fight. They gain new skills. Their numbers go up. They get new abilities and maybe access to new magics and spells. But it is kind of a false increase, because as you get more powerful, and you can now take on greater challenges, the challenges get greater. 
the curtains part, and now tougher monsters are in front of you that make you feel like you're struggling as much as you did when you were lower level. It just gets a bit more convoluted is all. So the leveling system is kind of a, a false thing. You should feel challenged the whole way up when you're scraping with a few hit points at low level, and when you're really high level, you should not be challenging those things that challenged you when you were low level anymore, unless there's a really weird spin on things. So the leveling structure is also implicit in Dungeons and & Dragons and a lot of other games. The idea that you will eventually be rewarded for your adventures and daring do with more power, with more endurance, with more abilities and skills. And most people can go into a role-playing game and understand that. And people who've been playing Dungeons & Dragons may really look forward to that. It's been expressed as the distinction of a rat and a feeder bar, knowing that when you hit that thing, you get the reward. And to a certain extent, that is true. You do look forward to that next level because it means you can do more and cool things. And you get all of these advantages. You get more hit points. Maybe your, your attack bonuses go up and things like that. So... That, of course, has also been copied endlessly through many, many games. Di directly from Dungeons and Dragons or some derivative. The idea of having a job and having levels that advance as you go up, that has been uh, a Dungeons and, D Dungeons and Dragons staple for a very long time. And after that it really does kind of start getting fiddly as to what is a Dungeons & Dragons experience as opposed to any of the other games. Because there have been numerous editions of Dungeons & Dragons, each one has a little bit different feel for it. A fifth edition is the one, perhaps, that gives the strongest narrative experience. It has more tools to build storytelling elements into your character. The characters take a little bit longer to create and are a little bit more involved, potentially, within the storylines of the adventures that you're going to run. More of the assumption is that your adventure isn't just a big dungeon that you're going to go hit, kill some monsters, get some treasure, come back out, heal up, go back in until you level up, then you can go even deeper. And That was often the experience in the beginning days of Dungeons & Dragons, but not so much now. Now it's about bigger stories where you can go out into the world and leverage your powers against great threats that might destroy the world, or just have a big city crawl where you bash around pub to pub and help people out or attack elements within the city. You can do all of that easily enough and still make it feel challenging and exciting when you're doing it. So, yeah, there's a lot of elements that, that Dungeons & Dragons offers, and the current one is the one that's most heavily story-driven. So, people who like a good story, you know, Dungeons & Dragons speaks to them. People who like the idea of combats where you have to claw your way to victory, Dungeons & Dragons has ways where you can do that, and still not just slaughter the characters out of hand. There's a number of safety nets so that you can really punish a group and make them have tough challenges from time to time and not necessarily worry as much about killing off a character in the middle of the game and having to roll up another character. That's both a strength and a weakness to some people. Some people like the idea that your characters are fragile and are actually tempting fate when they go out an adventure because a lot of adventurers die. And that's really not the experience of the modern Dungeons & Dragons game as much. I'm not saying characters don't get killed off in the course of their adventures. They do, but it is a bit harder. There are things in place that make it a little bit safer to risk your life again and again and again. So, as far as the greatness of a game, though, that's just the definition of it all, all of that. That's a pretty broad definition that could apply to a lot of other games. And there are a great number of role-playing games to choose from. But there's a few other things that really help them to lay claim to that title of world's greatest game besides user base, besides sales. There is more material for Dungeons & Dragons than most any other game. The closest runner-up to that might be Pathfinder, which derived from Dungeons & Dragons, and some people actually look at it as a perfection of one of the editions of one of the Dungeons & Dragons editions. 
um, to each their own. I mean, the, the company behind it is a publishing house that made a lot of material. But Dungeons & Dragons has more of just about everything. More optional and variant rules that can change the way the game works so that you can flavor it your particular way. Story paths that can cover years of gameplay and can have really deep and involved plots. Or ones where you just go into a dungeon and kick around monsters and take their treasure if that's what's interesting to you. There's a massive amount of material supporting the game. Miniature lines. All their critters are, are pretty much preserved in plastic for your use. Or if you go back a ways, you could paint up some pewter or even some lead if you can find them and, and have all of these decorations for your game. Many of those things are slanted towards Dungeons and Dragons and games that share a common root with Dungeons and Dragons. It's awfully hard to deny. There's a lot of reasons that people love Dungeons and Dragons. There are those who will detract from it, of course, and it's sometimes fashionable to do so. People who look at other games and they love other games and are tired of just seeing Dungeons and Dragons getting all of this attention. But, to be fair, uh, Wizards of the Coast has done a pretty good job, all in all, of constantly expressing their desire to bring the community into this new edition of Dungeons and Dragons. Which is good, because they lost a lot of community support in the 4th edition that was not as welcoming to some of the people who enjoyed previous editions of Dungeons & Dragons. It was, a, it was a sea change of difference, and I'll talk about that in a, in a later session. But as far as this one goes, you know, they're really trying, I think. And I think in general, they might do a pretty decent job of letting you make the game that you want, so that you can play it your way. Not just under the very tight auspices of whatever uh, the, the book says you have to be. One of the books actually just goes out and says, if you don't like any of our rules, change them. The numbers are just there as a guide, and if you want your world to be flavored differently, then do it. If we say this race is, is slanted towards evil because in our story they do, that doesn't have to be the case in your world or even your version of our world. And there's a lot of, of people who confuse that with you know saying that, oh, the, the, this viewpoint is wrong. This No, it's you can play whatever you like. And Dungeons & Dragons, whether you love it or whether you hate it, almost everybody has to admit, They've got a huge audience, and just like with any huge audience, they, they'll have, you'll have people who are just not happy with one thing or the other, sure. But there's still more people playing the game than any other. And a lot of the reason is that it is a solid game with a solid concept with a winning formula for their class-level-based system. The mechanics as far as rolling a 20-sided die to resolve your situations, from combat to crossing a street is the same. It's a unified system that's easy to handle. And as a result, yeah, it's got a pretty good claim to be the world's greatest role-playing game. At least as far as where the vast majority of people seem to be happy with it. Or at least to the point where they can acknowledge that it's a pretty good game. Uh, but, as I said, everything is subjective. So if it's the world's greatest role-playing game, it certainly might not be your greatest role-playing game, but they do an awful lot of things good, and they do an awful lot of things well, at least, and you can tell some great stories with it and have a lot of fun, and make some pretty cool characters that you want to get to the table and play uh, every chance you get. So, that's my take on it. Are they the greatest? To me, they have a claim to it, but it's too subjective to actually say something like that, so... But hopefully this inspires some thought, maybe inspires some comments. Other people might have their own take on this question. But um, honestly, for those who you know say it's a terrible game, and uh, yeah, maybe you had some bad experiences, maybe you had a subpar game master, or or you know maybe you just there's this t a certain type. Maybe you don't like classes. You don't like people telling you what job your character has, and that's cool. Some people are just free-spirited like that. They don't like 
feeling their character is restricted and that they can go in any direction. And that's fine. There's plenty of games for that. There's a lot of choices out there, and there's no one right or wrong game. It's important to go out and find the game that's right for you if you're in the hobby. Don't go into a game regretting it or resenting the game because it doesn't fit your, your needs. So... That's my take on the question. Is Dungeons & Dragons the world's greatest role-playing game? So, I'm sure you'll have your own opinion, and if you do and want to share it in a respectful way, uh, feel free to put it in the comments below, and we can have a debate about it, and we can talk about it. But, in this case, uh, this session is now over, and uh, if we do end up revisiting this at some point, uh, it will probably be about something topical, more so than the grand scope of is Dungeons and Dragons the world's greatest role-playing game. So, uh, until that time, though, I hope that you can get out there and roll some dice, play some games, and have some fun. Uh, but until that, thanks again for joining me, and farewell.